Welcome to another instructional video from Everlast Refiners. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a number 10 Everlast Refiner bypass oil filtration system on a 2007 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter Triton engine. This kit comes with everything you'll require to completely install this bypass oil filtration system. Additional uh, replacement filter elements can be purchased separately at www.everlastrefiner.com. First, we're going to install the mounting bracket and then the uh, oil refiner canister onto this bracket. So, in the engine compartment uh, on the driver's side in the front of the compartment, disconnect the ground wire shown in the photo and move it down and out of your way. Next, locate the mounting bracket base as shown in the photo and install it using the quarter inch self tapping screws provided in the hardware kit. This bracket needs to be reasonably level. Next, install the bracket straps onto the bracket base just installed using the quarter twenty by one inch bolts, lock washers and nuts provided in the kit. Tighten these bolts and uh, level the bracket straps. Once level, using a quarter inch drill bit, drill a secondary hole in each of the bracket straps through one of the pilot holes provided in the bracket base and install a second uh, set of quarter twenty bolts, lock washers, and nuts to lock these brackets in a level position. Next, uh, reattach the ground wire previously removed as shown in the photo. Next, we're going to prepare the uh, oil refiner canister for installation. Prior to installing this canister onto the bracket just installed, we're going to attach the engine oil supply lines and engine oil return lines to the canister. This will uh, help facilitate and ease the installation. So, uh, first, using the thread sealant provided, uh, attach a 90 degree street elbow onto uh, the brass inlet flow regulating valve provided in the kit. Once these two fittings are attached to each other, install this assembly using the thread sealant provided onto the inlet port located on the bottom of the canister and orient it so that it points toward the engine oil uh, return port located on the side of the canister. Next, using the thread sealant provided, install the non swivel end of the 1 quarter inch engine oil supply line onto the valve assembly just installed. Next, using the thread sealant provided, install a 90 degree street elbow onto the 1 half inch uh, engine oil return port located on the side of the canister and orient this elbow so that it points downward. Next, using the thread sealant provided, install the non-swivel end of the 1 half inch engine oil return line onto the one half inch street elbow just installed on the side port of the canister. Now the canister is ready for installation. Slide the uh, the canister down and into the the bracket straps, and also route the both the engine oil supply line and return line back along the fender and down along the side of the engine. Uh, and uh, be mindful to stay away from the uh, exhaust manifold. Once uh, the assembly has been slid into the bracket, install the uh, quarter twenty by two and a half inch bolt into the holes in the ends of the bracket straps to, to secure uh, the, the canister installation. Before completely tightening this bolt, uh, level the, the oil refiner canister. Once it's level, I'll go ahead and, and tighten that, that bolt up between the two bracket straps uh, until the, uh, the canister is secure. Do not over tighten these bracket straps, just tighten enough to where it's, it's, it's firmly mounted. Next we're going to attach the engine oil return line. 
at the oil pan, remove the drain plug and drain the engine oil. Once the oil is drained, install the uh, engine oil pan adapter fitting onto the, uh, the port uh, previously occupied by the drain plug. This is a uh, O-ring boss fitting and does not require a thread sealant. Next, attach the uh, swivel end of the engine oil return line to the adapter fitting just installed and secure the routing of the engine oil return line with the tie wraps provided. Uh, next, replenish the engine oil and check the leaks. Next, I'm going to show you how to attach the engine oil supply line to the engine oil filter housing. Um, on the driver's side of the engine, at the engine oil filter housing, remove the engine oil pressure switch. Next, install the Street T adapter using the thread sealant provided and orient it so that the side port faces as shown. Next, using the thread sealant provided, install a 90 degree street elbow onto the end port of the Street T just installed. Reinstall the engine oil pressure switch using the thread sealant provided onto the side port as shown and reconnect the uh, electrical connection. Next, uh, install the swivel end of the one quarter inch engine oil supply line onto the street elbow installed on the end port of the street T. Secure the routing of this engine oil supply line using the tie wraps provided and be mindful to stay uh, clear of the uh, engine oil, or I'm sorry, the engine exhaust manifold. Next we're going to establish the electrical connections to the heated lid assembly of the thermal dehydrator. Um, on the driver's side of the firewall you'll find a rubber plug as shown in the photo. Pierce this rubber plug from inside the cab, um, route the red power wire through this plug into uh, into the engine compartment, and then follow the uh, the side of the uh, the engine compartment uh, as shown, and uh, route the uh, the red power wire forward uh, uh, to the uh, one of the posts of the the heated lid assembly. At the heated lid assembly, uh, attach a uh, blue uh, hoop connector provided in the kit and attach the end of the red power wire to one of the posts on the heated lid assembly. It does not matter which, this uh, heating element isn't polarity sensitive, it just requires a power on the ground. Now while you're here, uh, attach the ground wire to the heated lid assembly. Um, Attach one end to the remaining post of the, the heating element and uh, the other end of the ground wire to one of the bracket bolts. Now back in the uh, engine compartment, I'm sorry, back in the, in the passenger cab, uh, route the uh, red power wire across the bottom of the dash uh, over to the passenger side. Um, the power distribution panel for this truck is located under the dash on the on the far right side of the uh, of the firewall. Uh, once routed over to this point, uh, attach the uh, inline fuse assembly using the uh, the blue butt connector provided in the kit and uh, the uh, uh, the blue spade connector also provided in the kit. Once this fuse assembly is attached to the end of the power wire, insert the spade connector into the fuse slot shown and uh, then close this panel back up. Uh, secure all of the uh, routing of this, uh, this power wire uh, assembly with the tie wraps provided. Now it's time to operationally check the system and set the flow rate. First, remove the heated lid using a rag or a glove. Um, this lid has a heating element in it and gets reasonably hot. Not hot enough to burn you, but you wouldn't want to hold on to it for very long. Start the engine and watch for oil flow across the dispersion plate. This will take several minutes, so be patient. Opening the regulator valve on the bottom of the oil refiner canister fully and running the engine at high idle will help speed this process up. 
Now once oil is flowing, adjust the regulator valve so that a uh, slow even flow of oil covers the step dispersion plate at idle. Once this is established, run the engine at high idle to ensure that the can will not overflow. If you notice the canister filling up, readjust the regulator valve on the bottom of the oil refiner canister to slow the flow rate. For this application, one half turn open of the flow uh, regulator valve is the normal setting. Uh, return the engine to idle. Um, reinstall the heated lid using a rag or a glove. Install the washer and wing nut provided and hand tight is fine. And that's it. Uh, the Everlast Refiner Bypass Oil Filtration System is installed and the flow rate is established. Maintenance. Now we're going to discuss how to maintain the uh, the Everlast Refiner Bypass Oil Filtration System. Uh, first, uh, you have to check your oil level and dispersion plate flow rate regularly. Take oil samples every 20,000 miles. Replace the uh, filter element as required whenever you notice a significant reduction in the oil flow rate across the dispersion plate or you get an oil sample report that indicates that it's time for a replacement or finally foregoing all of that um, replace your filter every year. Oil analysis. Um, to address any questions you may have about your oil sample results uh, please go to the link shown here or for uh, direct assistance please contact our technical support um, at the, the link provided. Now, how does it work? Well, if you have any questions about how the Everlast Refiner Bypass Oil Filtration System actually works to preserve the uh, condition and quality of your motor oil, please go to the link provided. There's a thorough description here and a, a short video which explains in detail how the uh, oil refining process works. Finally, uh, for any technical support questions, uh, please contact the link shown here. I hope you enjoyed this video and please uh, keep coming back uh, to uh, view additional videos uh, from Everlast Refiner. Thank you.